It's key to understand the drug's properties because they have a very big impact on the cost and duration of the drug development process. For example, if the drug has poor permeability or poor solubility, then it's going to take extra time to actually undertake that development. And also, uh, it needs more drug. All three of those aspects are in short supply in the early development of any compound. Also, if the drug is chemically reactive, it's considered unstable and means will have to be found to actually reduce the rate of that chemical reaction or actually eliminate it uh, in the drug product. By doing so, again, one has increased the duration and cost of the development. So understanding one's drug's properties will help understand the cost and duration of development and also potential for impact on the cost of goods at the end of the process. It's easy to underestimate the cost and duration of drug development. For instance, anybody with the right equipment, quality processes, certification and oversight can create a few hundred capsules that could be sent to the clinic. However, it goes beyond that. The regulators rightly demand data packages to show that the drug will be safe when administered. And it's the cost and duration of that development, the package generation that's key. It's going to take a few thousand capsules to generate that package. Therefore, there needs to be enough drug substance in the world to do that. A view of the product development, the CMC portion, if you will, that's chemistry, manufacturing and controls, needs to be undertaken before committing to any investor as to when you're going to be ready for the clinic. Many startups have a business strategy of out-licensing their IP at some point in the development process. This is quite normal and understood. However, they must always recognize that whoever they license it to will only be able to realize value when the product is commercialized. So taking the product to end of phase two is fine. If you've then proven the uh, clinical um, proof of principle, that's great. But if in the process you haven't developed a product that could then be further developed to the market, one hasn't de-risked the commercialization piece. Any licensee during the due diligence process will recognize the fact that development has not been de-risked and this will devalue the IP. Therefore, you will not get the return that you intended. So, viewing the end point, commercialization is absolutely key. Many pharmaceutical startups have incredible experience and expertise in the biology or the pharmacology of their compounds, but very few have understanding of the chemistry, manufacturing and controls aspects, the science or the regulatory climate, so they don't often understand how long it's going to take and how much that process will cost. I believe it is absolutely key for these companies to have to bring in some strategic expertise to help them formulate their plans to take forward that project. Once they have those plans in place, they can talk to their investors about the cost and duration with knowledge and understanding.